still wish to testify? Yes, I do. Why? Because this jury needs to hear from me and hear the truth. Dean's defense team opened its arguments by calling him as a witness. And for the first time, Dean spoke about the night he shot and killed a Tatiana Jefferson. WFAA senior crime and justice reporter Rebecca Lopez has been covering the case since the shooting in 2019. She has more on his testimony. Aaron Dean is the only person who could tell the jury why he shot and killed a Tatiana Jefferson. So he took the stand to tell them what he saw the moment he fired. I saw the silhouette. I was looking right down the barrel of a gun. And when I saw the barrel of that gun pointed at me, I fired a single shot from my duty weapon. He testified that seconds before he pulled the trigger, Put your hands up! Show me your hands! He shouted commands because he couldn't see her hands. And I was shouting, uh, put up your hands, show me your hands, show me your hands. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He says he saw a Tatiana fall to the ground. When my vision cleared, then I observed the person that we now know as Miss Jefferson. I heard her scream and, and saw her fall like this. And I, I knew that, that I'd shot that person. On cross-examination, prosecutors grilled him about his tactics. He and his partner never announced themselves. But if you would announce yourself Fort Worth police, then maybe Tatiana Jefferson would still be alive, correct? Maybe. Dean and his partner were responding to an open structure. He testified he thought it was a burglary when he looked inside the house and saw things scattered everywhere. So he didn't announce himself, he says, to tip off a potential burglar. Yet prosecutors say he pointed his flashlight at a window. But now you've given away your position to whoever's inside the house because you've decided to turn your flashlight on in the citizen's private backyard. Is that correct? Yes. So now if there's anyone in that home, they know for a fact that someone is in their backyard with a flashlight. Prosecutors also questioned him about why he didn't do CPR. I know you're crying right now, but October 12, 2019, you weren't crying when you decided not to administer CPR to a Tatiana Jefferson, were you? I didn't decide not to. Prosecutors went through a list of things they say he didn't do properly that violated the department's general orders and put himself and his partner at risk. It's more bad police work, isn't it? It's not the best. Prosecutors asked Dean what grade he would have given himself if he, for, that, for the job that he did that night. He said he would have given himself a B. He says he thought he did a fine job. Kristen Izzy, back to you. Rebecca, you've covered several officers who have been on trial for murder and taken the stand. How do you think Dean did today? Well, he got very frustrated when prosecutors kept grilling him about why, if he thought this was a burglary, he didn't call for backup, why he didn't step away from the home, wait for other officers to get there to help them clear that home safely because they did not believe that there was any kind of imminent threat to anyone at that point and that he put himself in a position to use deadly force, Cynthia. All right. Our thanks to you, Rebecca Lopez, live in Fort Worth tonight. Community leaders across North Texas are keeping an eye on the trial and some of them are already getting concerned about potential outcomes. Some of them were caught off guard today when Aaron Dean took the stand. Not so much that he testified, but the speed at which the trial is moving. Some community leaders in Fort Worth tell us they lost faith when an all white jury was seated, while others say they expected prosecutors to take more time in terms of presenting evidence to the jury. George Floyd's murderer uh, was sentenced over a year and a half ago. So we took three years to really, ha uh, for the prosecution to present a two-day case. So, that, so, so thus far, uh, uh, it seemed as though Aaron Dean has been brought to trial, but he, he hasn't been brought to justice. Senior Pastor Michael Bell is from the Greater St. Stephen First Church and plans to keep monitoring the trial right through the verdict. I mean, I, I feel like what we just saw there from Dale Smith, uh, the prosecutor, is a master class in a cross-examination. WFAA is bringing you live coverage of all the testimony with Tanya Iser and a team of legal experts. You can find our streaming coverage on WFAA.com, WFAA Plus, and on our WFAA YouTube page.